In this lesson, we're going to learn about array lists. And I want to start with a little story. So our arrays before were like lockers. When you got your locker, you could store so many books in it. And you could squeeze in books, and you knew exactly where those books were. But once you filled up your locker, your locker got too messy, and you, you couldn't move stuff around. You always had to take things out and put things back in. And it was never really a perfect solution because you couldn't store all that much. And it was kind of a pain to move things around when they're in there. So you want to come up with a better strategy. So you recruit your friends and your friends' lockers. And instead of storing things in your own locker, you're going to store things in your friends' locker or lockers around the campus. Now, this has a lot of advantages. In that you can store more stuff because you have more lockers available to you now. And you're able to, 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 to get things and, and, and find them, but you have to go through your friends. That's what array lists are. Array lists are the ability to expand and contract the amount of storage that we need, but instead of directly accessing things like we do in array lists, we have to go through, or in arrays, pardon me, we have to go through array lists in order to get access to our information. We can still find out where things are, it just takes a little bit longer and takes an extra step. We can store a lot more information, but we have to store certain types of information so that we don't upset our friends. Here's how we do it in Java. So array lists. So array lists are a special type of object. They work much like arrays do, and that's why they start with array, but they're a little bit different. So array lists are uh, part of the generics family, and we have to actually import a special tool from Java. It's not built into the language. So we're going to have to have an import statement at the top of our code. Import and we're going to say java.util.array, and with a capital L, lists. And it's array list singular. So we need this at the top of our code in order to do this. This is like recruiting our friends. We've got to say, hey, we need your help at the top of our code. And then we're going to go ahead and write our array list. Now our array list is going to be declared like this. Array list, and we're going to introduce new syntax. So before when we had arrays, we would put the, the data type and then we would put brackets. Now we say array list, and we now use angle brackets, the greater than or less than symbols on your keyboard, and we give a generic type. So uh, this may be uh, a string, it could be integer, but one important thing, we'll just go ahead and call this data type here. Data type. And then we go ahead and put our variable name. So this is variable. And then we declare a new array equals new array list, sorry, we declare a new array list, new array list, we repeat our data type inside of our angle brackets. So I'm just going to put data type here, data type, inside of our sharp angle brackets, these are sharp angle brackets, and of course, I'm going to have to squeeze this in here. We then close with semi uh, parentheses and a semicolon. Getting ahead of myself. So that is what it looks like to declare an array list. Let's see if we can squeeze this down just a little bit more. Get it all on one page. So that's our data type. I'll move that over. Okay, so that should fit all on one page now. So this is what it looks like to create an array list. Now, an array list is flexible. So 
we can create a blank array list, unlike an array where we had to say how much could fit in there first, we can just say an array list and we can use this special little thing where we use the add method. So instead of this, we could say a variable name And all we have to do is put a dot and say add. And we've got, but well, we add whatever we want on there. And it'll add it to the end of the list. So this will add, uh, we'll go ahead and put some, some data. And this adds to the end. of the array list. Isn't that awesome? So much easier than our array in terms of getting things and making things because we don't have to think about what's in each slot. This will actually take care of it for us, but we have the opportunity if we need to to save this information and get with that location. Just like if we were storing books with our friends in their lockers, we don't necessarily know where their locker number is, but if we needed to, we could ask our friend, hey, where is that information? And they'll tell us where their book is, and they'll give us that information that we need. So let's take a look, a quick look at an example here. Let's create an array list of strings. And let me point out, this needs to be, this is an important piece of information. This must be an object. So this must be an object type. We cannot use, can't use primitives. Can't use primitives. So we can't use integer, double, or booleans in this case. But remember our friend, this is where wrapper classes come in. Remember way back when, I think wrapper has one, does it have two P's? No, I, yeah, wrapper class. No, one P, wrapper class. So remember our capital integer, our capital D double, those are our wrapper classes. And remember all the things we learned about boxing and auto boxing, how we can get information into and out of our array list. So let's take a look at this. Let's say a, uh, array list. I'm sorry, we can get things into and out of uh, data types. So let's go ahead and say integer. And we're going to call this um, integer, we'll call it list. It's a pretty typical name. And we'll say it is a new. Array list and of type integer. And we'll make it blank. Now I have my array list integer of type integer called list. And I can simply say list dot add. And I can pass in three. And this is going to auto box and, uh, into an integer. So remember our friend auto boxing, this is going to create an integer object for us. And we can do add list, let's add another one, list.add. Uh, three. Uh, let's do a different number. Let's do 57. It does the same thing. Now, here's a cool one. It has a two-string built method built into it. So, remember how hard it was to print out our arrays before? Now, ArrayList has a built-in two-string method for us that makes things super simple. So, we can do a system dot out dot println and say list, and this will print out something. This will give us an output that uh, opens with brackets, 
and it will print out the information. So it'll print out 3, 57 for us. That's all we have to do to print an array list. Super simple compared to how difficult we had to make a for loop to print through arrays. Really not fun. Now array lists, all we have to do to get the information out is this. We can also get information. So one of the things that's different is that in the previous arrays, we had to do, uh, let's say we had an array So recall here that if we had an array of type ray, or we called an array ray, if we wanted to get a piece of information at a specific point in ray, we would have to write ray and then brackets of some number, right, to get information out of ray. We can do the same thing in an array list, but we use a different terminology. So instead, with an array list, with array list, this would be this. We'd say list dot get our n number. So slightly different syntax, but the same behavior. There's actually quite a few methods that we'll uh, look at in the notes that we can use for array lists. I'm not going to go through all of them here, but we can see there's a bunch of functionality built into the array list. There's even a sort func uh, method that is in the array list that will automatically sort information for us. Super awesome and uh, useful. But there's a couple of drawbacks of array lists. Number one, you cannot use your primitive types, and number two, they're actually slower than arrays, and that's why arrays are still an important data type that we need to learn and not just jump straight into array lists, because if we learn those first, we'd probably want to use these and never actually look at an array. All right, so that is array lists. In the next lesson, we'll learn how to move through them and how to manipulate them even more. I'll see you guys in the next one.